Hello everyone and thank you for all of your support, well wishes and comments on our last video about selling our van. It was an emotional experience for us and um, at the same time we are very excited. So people have described it as bittersweet. That's probably pretty accurate. Pretty accurate. So this video is going to go in to the reasons on why we sold our van, um, which I know a lot of people were asking a little bit deeper on why would you even sell that van? So the very first reason we sold our van is the biggest downside of a van and that is space. You all know that we loved living in this van and we loved the small size and space is just a side effect of it obviously being small like that but it allowed us to get into a lot of places and have a lot of fun. But this is two people living full time in a van. And working full time. And the space was just starting to feel really, really small. And with the small space, we have talked a little bit about how everything just takes way longer to do. There is no such thing as two people doing something at the same time. There's a lot of sitting and waiting for one person while the other person is doing something, switching spots, moving a hundred things to get to one thing. All of those things and time constraints are a direct result of it being small. And we're just ready for kind of shortcutting those items, you know, getting more space so that we can be more effective with our time. Um, you know, patience isn't really an issue. We've definitely mastered patience. But I would say just having the freedom of moving around at the same time and not always being dependent on what you could or couldn't do based on where the other person was standing. So that's kind of the obvious first one, space. It's just kind of a simple no-brainer. We'd like to change to a bigger space. And honestly, all of these reasons are very small reasons. We could have easily stayed in the van and continued to travel longer, but ultimately we sold it because we wanted to. We like change. Yeah, change is not a bad thing. There's no need to be afraid of it. And that's just kind of our, our lifestyle is uh, change. Like, I mean, imagine living on the road full time in a van like this, like the stuff is always changing and um, it's very hard to get a consistent routine. And honestly, we're embracing it. We, we like it. it. It keeps it good. It does. It, and it keeps us younger at heart. It keeps us learning, keeps the excitement level up. Um, it just keeps us like having that sparkle. This is fun. And honestly, how long can two people live full time in a van? Forever? I don't know. It's been two and a half years for us. And honestly, I think we could have went uh, longer and went to like three years, maybe sold the van next year. But a little seed was planted in our head at the end of last year and it just kind of continued to grow and we decided to test the waters and, and see if it was the right time for us. That's true. Once we got the idea and we started like talking about it more and more, it just snowballed pretty quickly where, yeah, that's that's what we want to do. We're going to sell it. Yeah, the more like you hit your head on something or the more you're in the shower and hunched over, you just, those little things that you kind of brush off because you're loving the lifestyle of a class B van, um, those things just get magnified. And again, remember all these reasons are very tiny and small. We're just doing it because we want to. The next reason is because our travel style has changed. When we first got into the van and we were newbies, we were traveling very quickly. We were leaving every two days, three days, and we put on 20,000 miles our first year, which is very common for new RVers because you have this mentality, you gotta go, 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 you gotta fit it all in. Lots to see. And then things kind of shift. You embrace the pace, you slow it down. Our second year, our mileage dropped way down to 10,000. We sliced it in half and we found ourselves staying for like one to two weeks at a time at the same location. I would say that's the most common reason why people would change rigs is that their travel style is gonna change or does change inevitably and that's why people choose something different. So it's no different for us that we found ourselves just enjoying life and our being a little bit differently. So. I think it was when we found boondocking, that was a big change. We, we really enjoy doing that. We'd like to push it farther than one week, 
Uh, one week's great in a van, but it's a, a stretch. I mean, you've seen our videos. We are stretching it to make it a week. It's completely doable, but I mean, you have to do a lot of conservation on a 15 gallon black tank. One thing we don't have is a tow vehicle and we've made it without a tow vehicle in two and a half years. And when we got the bikes, that really did change it for us. That gave us freedom, a lot of freedom. Um, and it really allowed us to explore that five to 10 mile range around wherever we're at. Love it. Wouldn't change that for anything. Still going to have the bikes for sure. But a tow vehicle allows us to go somewhere that's a half hour away, or maybe it's an hour away. Uh, or maybe it's a full day trip without counting our pedals remaining. Yep, exactly. And of course, in a van, you could easily, this is what we did when we first had it, you just packed up the van and, and took off. But as we accumulated more comfort things like tables, chairs, tents, rugs, uh, bikes, all that was a setup. So you have to break camp every single time. So I think people that are in a class B that really travel and do all the exploring, they keep it very minimal, um, you know, and just wake up and, and head out. Yeah, that's a good point. And last, we want to talk about the spice factor. We want to keep it spicy. We want to keep it spicy and fun. Yeah, I think we've, I don't want to say we mastered the van, but we felt very comfortable in accomplishing a lot of things that we wanted to do. And um, it's fun to do new things. It's fun to explore new stuff. It's fun to be challenged. It's fun to be uh, a little stressed. And um, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I am too. We're definitely ready for just shake it up, uh, learn something different, and continue to experience new things in life because life is too short to get complacent. It absolutely is. And that's what we're doing. That's why we kind of flipped our lifestyle upside down. That's why we're doing this. I think that's why people like you like to enjoy to, to watch it. Um, I mean, if we were just doing absolutely nothing and, and boring stuff, it just wouldn't be interesting to watch. And that's, of course, not why we're doing it. But we want to keep the fun, not only uh, for you guys, but, you know, we want to keep it fun for us. We want our life to be fun and we want to enjoy what we're doing. So... Those are kind of just some of the reasons. Um, it's hard to even put it up. We were trying to write it down on paper and it's, uh, there's not an easy way to just say, you know, uh, what I wrote down first was we're doing it because we, we want to do it. <laughs> really, that's uh, like, Because we want to? That's just the biggest reason. We want to try something different. And, uh, you know, there's not very many things in life that are permanent. And, um, you know, this certainly isn't. This is just a chapter uh, of our lives. So we want to continue our being, of course, but we just want to do it in a different way. So uh, the next video right after this, we are going to talk about more about some of the different types of RVs that we'd really like to find ourselves in and some of the reasons we are. Um, but we have a little list of some of the things that we'd like to change. And I'm going to read those off now. You ready? Yes. First one is a permanent bed. Mm -hmm. um, making your bed twice a day for two and a half years, uh, it catches up with you. Completely doable. We would still recommend somebody that's interested in a van. It's not a big deal if, if the van and the travel style outweighs it. This is just something that, since we're trying something new, this is the opposite of what we had. We'd like a permanent bed. So that I can nap. <laughs> Next, obviously, would be a separate shower and bathroom, a dry bath. Uh, the van, we're so grateful to have a bathroom. A wet, yeah. a wet bath is, is great. We're grateful to have a shower. We're grateful to have onboard water tanks and heaters and uh, a black tank and all that. Like We're fully self-contained, and it felt great. We felt very comfortable and mobile and happy in that van. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But hey, when you put a wish list together... You put down whatever you want, and we would like a dry bath on the next round. Yeah, again, we want to change what we had before. Next, we'd like a little bit more kitchen space. Some of you guys guessed this, that we would like more kitchen space because Chris does a lot of cooking. The van was, was pretty good. It had a large kitchen for a van, uh, and a lot of RVs don't even have huge kitchens. Like, you know, you can look at like a 35-foot Class A, and it has a little corner kitchen. Mm -hmm. So, you know that's something we're going to keep in mind is, is a bigger kitchen space. And with the bigger kitchen space, 
perhaps a full-size refrigerator and a freezer. Yeah, that's that's big. We upgraded our fridge once from a three cubic foot to a 3.8. I think that made a world of oh, difference. Oh, it was so much better. That was a big deal. But could we imagine going from a 3.8 to a eight cubic foot or yeah. a 10 cubic foot? I mean, a, that's pretty standard in, in a lot of trailers, eight cubic foot. Yeah, and I think that will eliminate some very, very small anxiety that I would feel just with grocery shopping and that we didn't have a vehicle to go. You know, like we would, I would take a lot of pressure to like cram a full weekend and ration things so that it would last without us having to pack up the van and leave. Very small, not, I mean, it wasn't dramatic or anything, but when you actually express like what you were going through dealing with a small fridge, that was something that happened. Um, and again, those bikes did help in certain locations where there was a grocery store in biking distance. Mm -hmm. That was great. Um, but then that just gives you a, that gives you a taste of refrigeration freedom. Yeah. And it was our freezer that was really tiny. So the freezer, we couldn't put much in. The fridge was, was a decent size. Yeah. But just having a freezer, freezer will be great yeah. just to have like meat in there. Um, yeah. Meat or, you know, frozen vegetables. Yeah. Whatever. I don't know. Ice. We haven't had ice for a long time. <laughs> that type of stuff. <laughs> Next, we're going to talk about our boondocking wish list, which is going to be ground clearance, bigger tanks, and more room for solar and perhaps batteries. I'll say you can get to a lot of boondocking spots without a ton of ground clearance. A lot of places we went, almost any rig could go. Um, that's There's just a lot of BLM land, a lot of uh, free land, national forests and stuff like that out there. And we like doing it and we'd like to get out a little bit further or be a little less worried um, about um, you know hitting anything underneath or anything like that so we'd like a little bit more ground clearance um, more solar would definitely help in that type of situation we had 300 watts of solar it would be awesome to have you know double that if not like a thousand watts of solar you know we're not going to go crazy and never want like 2,000 watts but are you, you, you want 2000? I, whatever my solar guy suggests, <laughs> was, that's what I'm going to get. Yeah. Um, so that would be nice. And then the tank sizes, you saw our consistent battles with the tank sizes. And I think we did pretty good, uh, mastering those. That was a fun, fun transition to learn a, how to that do that. That was a healthy competition we gave ourselves. It was good. It was, it was really good. Um, so we got up to 40 gallons of water, um, 27 gallons gray, and then 15 black. So if we could, you know, get closer to like 60 gallons of fresh or, uh, you know, around 45 gallons of black and gray would be pretty cool. Um, but more tanks, bigger tanks is the bottom line. We had absolutely zero outside storage on the interstate. I know some Bs do, but not many. Maybe some B pluses do, obviously Cs do. But we had no outside storage, so that made it a little bit more difficult. Although, at the end, I loved our setup with the Blackstone, our Pico chairs and table, um, and our rug. Like We had a great outside setup that fit perfectly underneath our uh, rear couch. Mm -hmm. It took some time to to revolve some items to get to that perfect puzzle piece. Yeah. And yeah, once once we finally got that, it was great. So what would we do with this outside storage? Well, it would be pretty sweet to have like uh, a small smoker. Mm-hmm. We had some friends that uh, had that and allowed us to use it. And we had like pork chops and broccoli in this smoker. And it was like one of the best things I've ever had. There was like nothing done to it, but just pork chops and like broccoli in there. It was. So good. Uh, a little propane fire pit would be cool. You know, that's always fun to get out more and, and just plug in a little propane fire pit. We had no room for that on our van. Um, so we don't want anything crazy outside. We don't need a lot of stuff, just a little bit of extra room. Get our dumbbells nice. back on board. Yes. Uh, yeah, dumbbells would be another good one. And then back to the interior, we would like a little bit more width and a little bit more height. Um, we don't need giant slide outs or anything like that. Um, I'm not dis including slide outs, but just more width and a little bit more height would feel a lot more comfortable and less claustrophobic, especially for me. I have, I'm six, two almost. I have broad shoulders and the van um, is tight. 
Yeah. So I could only imagine a dude that's like 6'3 or 6'4 and weighs 250 pounds like in a van. That would be really hard. That would be really, really tough to, to be in there. Um, and then in, inside there, of course, we like big windows. We like open light spaces. And it would be nice to have like a permanent table set up. We had no permanent anything besides the countertop. So it'd just be nice to have somewhere to like set our laptop or set up a, you know, like this on a table we you know had none of this type of stuff. yeah and that all goes back to again the small space you have to put everything away every single step of the day so a couple days after this video comes out we're gonna put out another short video on um, like the top contenders and the different categories of what we're looking at it's very hard to RV shop right now there's no RV shows going on um, dealers inventory is horrible so um, you know, we haven't had a chance to, to look at a whole lot of stuff. So I'm basically doing all types of online shopping. Uh, but we want to go over the different top contenders and the different categories and would love your guys' input on what maybe, maybe what you have or what you have had or what you like or dislike uh, and that type of stuff. So we'll uh, catch you on the next video. Bye. Don't remember when